Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Respected Metropolitans, all the bishops, revered clergy, distinguished guests, as Kishali, all the ECC executive members, distinguished guests, friends and benefactors of ECC, family members of M.A. Thomas Sachin. Greetings and welcome to the 28th M.A. Thomas Memorial Lecture. Ecumenical Christian Center is known through the founder, late Reverend Dr. M.A. Thomas. He had a very humble beginning. His parents moved from place to place with the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he had the exposure to a pluralistic and interreligious world. He grew up with the freedom struggle of 1940s and understood well the role of secularism in a plural society. He realized early enough the need for people of both different religious faiths and secular theologies to work together in upholding the values of democracy, freedom, and secularism as most essential in our public life. Dr. Thomas had a broad vision of ecumenism and he defined it in Asian and Indian terms. He upheld the frontier movement aspect of ecumenism which went beyond the structures of the church, seeking new frontiers. Professor Nainan Koshi summed up thus, for M.A. Thomas, solid Christian faith, critical allegiance to the denomination to which he belonged, clear concepts about the unity of the church and the unity of humankind, creative interaction with people of other living faiths, the cause for justice, all were part of his ecumenism. Through his life and example, Dr. M. A. Thomas taught this ecumenism. Both ECC and Vigilindia are instruments for the ecumenical vision as he saw it. This year's theme, Advancing Human Rights, Using Right to Information in Tough Times, is very apt for these times. And through this presidential address, I have two responsibilities. Giving a cut and razor to the theme, and also creating interest in the forthcoming lecture. The beauty of God's creation is that when God created humans, he has given two means for their best existence, rights and responsibilities. Rights are necessary to make life rich and responsibilities are necessary to move life as per God's plans. Rights given to humans are the very foundation of abundant and complete human existence. One of the most important human rights is right to information. Importance of right to information. Why the right to information is important? Jesus said to his disciples, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Truth gives freedom to understand, make right choices, correct the course, and experience God's blessings in life abundantly. Right to information is the right to know the truth. Hence, the right to information is the most important right as it establishes the right to live in freedom. To realize the importance of the right to information, we must realize that information does not belong to the state, 
government or bureaucrats, but to the public. Information is created and collected by the government for the benefit of the public they serve with public money and by civil servants who are paid by public funds. Hence, information cannot be denied to citizens. Information brings about openness, transparency, accountability, and responsiveness in government functioning, which leads to good governance. Enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the rights status as a legally binding treaty obligation was affirmed in Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. It states that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. This has placed the right to access information firmly within the body of human rights law and is linked to respect for the inherent dignity of all human beings. It is crucial for participatory democracy. Information is the oxygen of democracy, as without information, citizens cannot make informed electoral choices or participate in decision-making processes. The key purpose of right to information is to bring about transparency and openness in government so that citizens are well informed and find ways of engaging with the state to promote accountability and citizen-centric development. In fact, government effectiveness, control of corruption, voice and accountability are some of the key dimensions of good governance. According to Kofi Annan, the seventh Secretary General of the United Nations, good governance is perhaps the single most important factor in eradicating poverty and promoting development. In 2005, Indian Parliament passed the Right to Information Act 2005 as a fundamental right under Article 19.1a. As per Justice P. L. Bhagavadi, where a society has chosen to accept democracy as its cradle faith, it is elementary that the citizens ought to know what the government is doing. But this act is not just a tool of knowing about government's decisions. Instead, it has more deeper implications. Our country is ruled by participatory democracy where the governance is of the people, for the people, and by the people. Whole aim of the participatory democracy is to nurture life in equality, unity, availability, and justice. Such nourishing of life is possible only if the participatory democracy has following elements, transparency, accountability, predictability, and participation. Connecting human rights with rights to information is a new and welcome development because it is the information that facilitates freedom, justice, and equality. I remember the government of Manmohan Singh in India enacted the Right to Information Act and how it enabled many whistleblowers to challenge the corrupt systems and it empowered democracy. Right to information and fight for human rights are the basic foundations of the functioning of democratic systems, and it can only check the dictatorships and authoritarian rules which are still prevailing all over the world. 
So these important constituents, elements of our democratic system need to be empowered and efforts have to be made to interlink them for the better future of individual freedom and independence of every nation. Hence the lecture on human rights and right to information is very relevant today. Friends, we have today a renowned constitutional lawyer with the position of commissioner as the Memorial Day speaker from our neighboring country, Sri Lanka, known for its beauty and nature. Ms. Kishali Pinto Jayavardhani is a highly qualified constitutional lawyer who got educated and well exposed in Europe, UK and other places and wrote many reputed books on human rights and right to information. Dear friends, I wish you all a great time in listening to a stimulating lecture. May the Almighty bless us all, one and everyone. Thank you. <laughs>